Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from Person from Germany. Hey Brian, please check out Austrian black folk metal band Perkta with their song Hebam. Their lyrics are in a Tyrolean dialect of German and for this track not available on the internet anyways. So I thought I'd transcribe and translate them for you as best I could. Cheers. I really appreciate that, especially when it comes to uh, bands like this. Black metal in particular, but uh, there's some specific regions that just any black metal out of it just doesn't have good lyrics on the internet, especially if they're not in English. And I really appreciate the uh, handful of people who go the extra mile and create some lyrics for me so we can do a lyrical dive. All right, so let's dive into this, see what's going on with Pekta. That's a cool little venue. I don't know what instrument that is, but we have a jaw harp there. That's a drum kit. I got that one. Beautiful ideas, gorgeous atmosphere. Was the last section in three? I don't think the intro was. That folk instrument putting melody.
very expressive harshes. <laughs> I was wondering if we had a different drum here because that's no that's the drum kit those toms sound much larger than they did Oh, it does say this is a music video though, so we might not be getting live audio on it. Which would explain the backing track on the chorus, I think it was. Love this duet. This is a wonderful chorus. The heightened intensity of the dual vocals with the and contrasting against the halftime feel, reducing the intensity. I think we're good. There's still some guitar work going on, so I wasn't too sure. 
that was very cool. I'm going to have to... This uh this music video came out 2024. I got to look into this. Because I enjoyed that. All right, so here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. It's the clean vocals. I really think that's the big differentiation between this and other folk black metal bands out there to me it's what allows it to elevate because when we get rid of the vocals and we explore just what the instruments are doing there's a lot of well we have the faster playing during the verse the chorus gives us that halftime feel so i want to focus on that faster playing right there constant 16th notes minor movement they kind of focuses more on the texture of the sounds more so than any melody. And we don't even have too much harmony from here either as the guitars are playing the same note, I think. the We do have a little bit of harmony as the folk instrument, I wish I knew the name of that thing, um, plays an octave higher. So it's still the same note, but it is a higher pitch of it. So that kind of creates some harmony there in a sense. Um, but that's it. Lots of pedal tone and, uh, and small movement on top of that, particularly from the folk instrument, which puts a little bit of a melody on top of these faster moving ideas. That makes up a majority of the faster playing. When we slow things down, we're still highly focused on texture and harmony. Although now we have a little bit of rhythm in here as well which uh, allows us to create space as we'll play a couple of notes and then rest and allow uh, the, the space to really resonate and to focus on other things such as the vocals, which primarily this style of writing was done so in the chorus, uh, which has the multiple vocal layers, which can give us um, more, more things to fill in the space and it allows us to focus more heavily on that core element. So... Those are really the two main ideas in the music, in the instrumentation here. The drums are mostly rigid throughout here. We only have one blast beat, and it comes uh, right before our first verse. That must have come right before our second verse, too. I like that. Kind of restraining on it, using it for heightened intensity, but not for the entire track. I really enjoy that. But otherwise, the drums are still rather rigid in their playing. We don't really have a lot of syncopation in here. We don't have a lot of melodic drumming, though we do have that really cool interlude uh, after the second verse. I think it was when I mentioned that the tom sounded a bit larger than previously. Uh, I, I like that section. We get a little bit more of a... A melodic focus on the drums, excluding the cymbals and going just for snare and toms. And so we really don't have a lot of melody. We don't have a lot of movement coming out of the rest of the band. They are there to create the atmosphere, to create the static element, uh, to, to really set the stage, the, the floor for the song, for everything else to rise off of it. In a sense, uh, in a, a play, they're the stage and the set dressing and the props. They set the atmosphere, the mode, the mood, and the tone of, of the art. And they do a phenomenal job of this. In fact, black metal and black folk usually does a really great job of this. It is something that the genre does very well. My issue with a lot of black metal tends to be that what we put on top of this, what will we put in the center of the stage for your attention to be drawn to is more background. It's more set dressing. It really, to me, isn't much of a, a focus. And, you know, this is a very, very broad stroke that I'm painting with here. There's going to be plenty of examples where I'm a bit wrong about it. And some of it's subjective, too. 
my ears still cannot really penetrate some of those walls of sound that black metal have. Uh, and so there's probably some bands that do have some really cool writing that I just don't hear. But with, with that aside, allow me to be a bit broad with this description here. I find a lot of black metal where it's a lot of really cool set dressing, atmosphere, texture, and it stops there. And this band doesn't. We have melody here which i love melody it's one of my biggest hurdles especially with third wave black metal and we have some really strong melody here not just regular old melody but harmony too in fact the very first set of vocals that we hear on this track is a duet singing together beautiful i might add i love the way their voices work together the timbres just fit and mold into each other in a way that almost gives it a unification of sound it works really well um and it's a gorgeous little melody too and i thought it was awesome to do it in isolation i don't think anything was playing during that maybe the drums maybe, maybe there was some rhythm some sort of pulse behind them but i don't think there was any harmony melody nothing pitched it was just the two vocals this was huge to go from the energy that we had down to just the vocals and it works really well that that type of contrast is it's ear catching it's like oh oh what are they doing here where are they gonna go with this and they kind of ditch the metal side to focus on more of a folk element just that melody writing This grows into the harshes. I like the harshes on this. They're not quite my cup of tea. You know, everybody likes different types of harsh vocals, just like everybody has different tastes for vocalists. Some people like specific vocalists, some people don't like them. Same way with harsh vocals. But what I do like about this, and maybe what I like about harsh vocals in general, is not a specific style, but expressiveness. This is more of that nasally, thin sort of harsh vocal that we find in a lot of black metal. It isn't the big booming growl you would find in death metal or something like that. It's it's missing the uh, the full body that you could find in like punkier styles of yelling, or even the very modern safe uh, style that we find in more mainstream styles of metalcore there's a it's interesting that there's like a unification of harshes in that genre <laughs> they all sort of sound the same right now um, anyways though this, this is a bit more nasally a bit thinner it fits the black metal aesthetic it is definitely a black metal harsh but it's very expressive there are times when she can push it a little bit higher, it makes it a little thinner, but it does catch a hint of tone to it. It feels higher pitched than others. Uh, there's a couple of times, I swear, she got some sort of whistle tone underneath it, and that was phenomenal. Um, she does have some lower growls, getting into something a bit throatier. And there's a bunch of areas in between. I don't think it's so much so that she has two or three harsh styles that she locks into so much so that she just understands how to compress or how to use her natural compression and uses a wide variety of mouth shapes and probably some muscular stuff in in the throat i don't know um there's probably a lot of things going on though because it seems like she's sing screaming in a sense not that i think that there is any true uh, vocal fold usage going on here where there is any actual true pitch but that the perceived pitch seems to fluctuate all over the place you know there are some harsh vocalists where they have a high and a low and they lock right into those two they they have two positions for their muscles and they just move between those two but this one just it seems to be like singing to her where she can just pick any pitch and and move into that and to me that's very expressive because it allows the the harsh vocal to feel dynamic 
And not just that, but the expressive part isn't just moving between these, but having ones with more intensity, more punch, wider, thinner. Uh, like I said, I think she even gets a whistle tone under a couple of them to put pitch underneath it. It's wild, almost like a scream. It's, uh, I don't know, y'all heard it. I, I, this is the type of harsh vocals I like, regardless of, of style. I do find the nasally or thinner style not to be quite my cup of tea, but I could get acclimated to it if more vocalists had this type of dynamic range to their harsh, um, harsh production. But I think the key thing here wasn't just the dynamic harshes, nor the well-done cleans. It was actually pairing them together. That chorus is amazing. It's, it's the harmonies of it. It's the vocal delivery. It's the way that the melody works alongside the chord progression. If I was the type of person who could get goosebumps from music, I think that would be one of those sections because listening to it just makes me really happy. It is one of the best things, I think. I, I, happy is even the wrong word for it. Elated, maybe? There are just certain combinations of sounds, tones, timbres, even harmonies, that when they hit my ear, the first thing I think of is, yes, can I have more? And there's usually some sort of knee buckling, and I kind of fall backwards. It's, I feel like it, it melts me. It really does. I just, it, I'm immediately hit with a wave of positivity and I want more of that. It is a, a, you know what it is? It's a dopamine hit from music. And that chorus did it for me. The halftime feel bringing the intensity down versus the wailing of the clean vocals and the screaming underneath it. There is intensity from the vocals, but not from the instruments and, and that sort of pulling apart at the, at the edges it makes the song feel like it's about to get ripped in two. And then the chords supporting the melody uh, and the types of tension that it explores, it is just really, really well done. I, I don't know if they understand how good of a chorus they've written here. I hope they do. But I'm not as huge of a fan of all the sections in here. The verse... The verse is really well done. I love the harmonies there. But it really acts, I think, as a strong contrast so that when we hit this tearing of, of the song, of the split intensity of the chorus, that we have impact. We have a contrast to that high, high tension to have something a bit simpler. It's a good verse. It works best in context of the song. Then there's the heavier metallic sections, the blast beats, not as big of a fan, but all of it is there to support the chorus so that when we get back to it, it is impactful. And I will probably listen to this song immediately when I'm done listening or done making this video. I'm going to put it on again and I'm going to check out their Spotify and I'm probably going to check another track out because I'm kind of sold on this. One of the things I live by in my life is in all things moderation. I think there are very few things that are terrible if they are moderated. Granted, there certainly are some things that just shouldn't be done at all. But I think this is a perfect song to, to encapsulate that. It has a little dash of everything and because of that it, it's elevated into something exceptional. That doesn't mean that it's completely perfect. I do wish that the instruments did a little bit more. In my head, I could hear some runs at the end of each chord progression as we moved in, or sorry, at the end of each chord, as we moved into the next chord in the progression, maybe just have a little bit of movement instead of just pedal notes of the chord over and over and over. Maybe after 75%, have a little run into the next one. The uh, folk instrument does this a couple of, no, it actually, it only does it at the end of the phrase. When we're going to repeat back to the first chord, it has a little bit of a movement that leads us back into it. I just wish we could have heard more of that, maybe harmonized with it uh, across the different instruments. I think there's just ways that we could have introduced movement to the rest of the instruments in ways that didn't pull the attention away from the vocals. 
uh, and in ways that I don't think disrupted the intensity of that because a lot of those moments were during the 16th note picking too which is about the texture and the atmosphere and so you don't want to pull too much attention away from that to put something melodic or, or moving in there I, I think there could have been again a nice balance in all of that um, but still like I said it all comes together in the chorus so well um, and then there's the bridge. I don't really have much to say about it. I thought it was nice to change a little bit to bring in uh, different types of drums. We also have the jaw harp in here that had a, it was in the intro and then, <clears throat> and then in the bridge too. That was nice. Nice texture change, a little bit of a timbre shift there. But they did feel like additions. Not so much anything that I think drastically altered the song or was, was massively improved by it, but I did enjoy their presence. And I think it really comes down to uh, maybe songwriting. See, the thing is though, man, how do you how do you go about this? Folk typically is associated by its simplicity of not just composition, but structure. And so... I am a bit more of a proggy kind of guy. I, I don't like the hardcore prog stuff. That's kind of hit and miss with me. The the more esoteric you get, <laughs> the, the tougher it's going to be for me to get into it. But I also I tend to get away from the most standardized ideas too. Again, in all things, moderation. I, I like to be in the middle somewhere. And so it's tough for me to say, oh, they should have done more of this. So they should have had uh, more sections or more variety because it's black and folk both are not really known for their variety they, they do have bands who have explored that but and they're, they're both known for for creating a sound and just being within it so yeah i don't think it's fair for me to ask for more even if i would have really liked it but at the end of the day they're doing what they're doing very well, and they're sort of acting as a bridge. It's very rare for me to say I'm going to check out more black metal, and they got me to say that. So I think that's a victory for both of us, them as a band and, and me, though I don't think they necessarily care about what I think. <laughs> but for them to reach somebody who doesn't typically listen to their music, I think any artist would be would be happy about that. I'm going to check over the lyrics here, and then we're going to dive into that, and then we're going to wrap the video up. All right. This song is about midwives. The opening text, which is probably too small, if I had known about that earlier, I might have made the, the viewfinder a little bit larger. But it comes from a book called Spiritual Midwifery, and it's a quote from the author Ina May Gaskin says, mothers, babies, and fathers need midwives to nurture them through the very impressionable and vulnerable period of pregnancy, labor and birth, and the time following birth. The wisdom and compassion a woman can intuitively experience in childbirth can make her a source of healing and understanding for other women. I don't know that I would have necessarily got that out of these lyrics. Part of it might be the translation, some stuff that gets lost in the translation a bit. But another thing is that I don't think it's quite as specific. Now, if you know that the title of the song, Hibam, translates to Midwife, that might make things a little bit more, uh, put, put them into perspective. But the lyrics themselves are a little vague. But when you have all the pieces, it makes total sense. So the chorus says, You will not get any rewards. Grateful are but a few. Who is at fault was clear all the time. Lift your guarding hand, lift the new into the light. Hopeful that Hope for that primordial cry, your face beams filled with awe. So the idea here is that you are, you have a job here. And most people aren't grateful for it. And you don't get rewarded for it either. And if anything goes wrong, you're at fault. 
you have a lot of responsibility and you don't get a lot of reward for it. However, your job is to bring the new into the light, to bring the child to birth. And through that, you get to see the light. It says your face beams filled with awe. You get to do this great task. It mentions in the first verse, the call was loud and you had to obey. You have to give your life for your stand. Days are endlessly long. You toil from early morning until night. You have to know about everything and have experience with even more. Proudly, you're showing your primordial power. You help their existence. The inheritance heavy like stone, but you know you could never have done anything else. This is your calling in life. And you do people a great service. It's also a heavy burden, but you can't see yourself doing anything else. At one point, uh, I think this is the bridge. It says, we look after the people. After mother and child, the sacrifice does not weigh as much as the peace that it brings. And this is just a, a really great song dedicated to midwives the way that they help people and families and even communities they help bring life into the world that is a monumental task i think that's awesome i, I can't think of any other song that's that's praising midwives or even you know any sort of uh uh jobs that people aren't so grateful about it's just it's really cool to see a song about the average person and in in this case it's it's a job that tends to get overlooked a bit how that pairs back to the song though i i can't really <laughs> i can't really uh find any any ties there thematic ties but you know, not every song has to. Sometimes you just have a song with some really cool music and some really cool lyrics. And I like that. In fact, they're, they're unified by both being cool. How does that work? All right, those are my thoughts on uh, Perkta's Hebam. Let me know what you thought of this song. Did you enjoy it? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything that you'd like to correct me on or add on to what I talked about. Maybe you just have a totally different interpretation of things. I don't know. Toss all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today, but I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.